Who writes them? I do. Backstage, so I apologize in advance if I cough a bit. Um, so I'll try not to. This essay is about something that occurred last week. I call it As I Lay Eating. <laughs> I spent Thanksgiving in a hospital. The meal consisted of dry turkey slices, bland mashed potatoes, sugary candied yams, and pumpkin pie that tasted more like chocolate yogurt if cooked in a Buster Brown shoe. <laughs> it's best I was in a hospital when I ate it. I shouldn't complain because the meal was free. Like a can drive, the hospital was giving meals out with every dying friend brought in. We brought our grandmother. She's not dying, but at 92, she's not exactly living. She's legally blind and hard of hearing, but has managed to live in her home by herself up until this point. On the previous day, the paramedics called my parents and told them my grandmother should not be left alone. When you call the paramedics, it's serious. When the paramedics call you, <laughs> I'm not sure that's supposed to happen. <laughs> uh, according to grandma, the whole thing started when she sat down on the toilet and didn't get back up for 24 hours. Yeah. She wears a life alert pendant on her neck but waited to push the button. She didn't want to be a nuisance thinking that maybe 13 hours on the commode was all she needed to get her strength back. When that didn't work, she decided to give it another 10. My grandmother is the I fall in and I can't get up lady. Not actually, just literally in the figurative sense. <laughs> And being blind, deaf, widowed, 92 years old, and no longer having power of attorney, you can imagine staying in her own house as the last remnant of control on her life that she retains. It explains why she told everyone who cared to listen that she can still handle living alone. When making her case to the physical therapist who was evaluating my grandmother's ability to take care of herself, she left out the detail that it took an ambulance to get her off the toilet. Thus, Thanksgiving this year is the beginning of a tough period a conversation no one in particular wants to have with her, but everyone knows is coming. And even though she makes comments about wishing age 92 never happened, I look at her and continue to be amazed. I am going to go out like such a chump. <laughs> I once broke down crying at the doctor's office from catching a stomach flu. <laughs> Another time I had a fever that made me hallucinate that each individual pain I felt was a direct result of how poorly I treated my friends. <laughs> So yeah, I'm positive the days near the end of my life will be pathetic. I'll probably whine about the years I wasted being gluten-free. <laughs> Confused nurses checking my morphine drip every time I mention that my first death occurred at 38 when I threw out wheat bread. <laughs> When I finally let go, it will resemble the morning my parents dropped me off at the babysitter for the first time. I'll scream, cry, and clutch at whatever I can until, in a moment of sad clarity, I become calm. As an adult, I've had such a moment already, the afternoon at work, when I looked down at the pastry container sitting on my desk and realized I had eaten over a pound of donut that day. <laughs> Years before going gluten-free, I went donut-free. <laughs> I am a wuss. My grandmother is not. In her life, she's had 17 surgeries, a hip replacement, lens replacements, glaucoma procedures, a hysterectomy, double mastectomy, and more. She's had so many things removed or replaced, I stopped calling her grandma and started referring to her as Generation 1 Parental Unit. <laughs> She has a bleeding order so bizarre she was the case study for a doctor's conference. She has osteoporosis so bad her bones are like balsa wood. Unlike the rest of us, I'm beginning to think my grandmother will never actually pass away. Instead, her constituent parts will just separate, <laughs> but retain the ability to talk. <laughs> a bowl of random tissue matter telling me where the sugar cookies 
are. <laughs> Does she want out of this life? Yes. Does she still listen to the Bulls play on the radio? Yes. And her friends are still loyal. Her 88-year-old cleaning lady, who for the past year or so has come by the house to cook, clean, and keep grandma company, arrived in a green tracksuit to the hospital to see how things are going. In the typical cheerful fashion of the elderly, she told us the story of her brother visiting for the holiday and how he's dying of cancer. <laughs> he has to wear one of those bags, she says. Oh, he has, he has colon cancer? He has cancer in his ovaries. <laughs> what? <laughs> yeah, they gave him six months. You mean he has testicular cancer? No, he has to wear one of those bags. He can't have cancer in his ovaries. From the colon cancer. Uh, okay, so when people who can see <laughs> and hear get this confused, I'm able to give my grandmother a lot of slack. Being mostly deaf and blind, grandma keeps getting disoriented. She'll say random things like, I'm wiggling my toes, I don't know why, but they seem to think it's important in the emergency room, so I keep doing it. <laughs> she hasn't figured out the emergency room was really interested in if her legs stopped working. She just thinks it's something hospitals tell their patients to do. <laughs> At other times, she'll forget she's in a hospital, telling us to get some pie out of the fridge or get her dress out of the closet. As I pulled the turkey pieces under her fork because she kept missing them, my, wa my mind wandered to the notion of her mind wandering, creating an infinite feedback loop of my impending senility. <laughs> of my impending senility. <laughs> My family keeps blasting questions in her direction to keep her actively engaged. When asked what she wants for Christmas, she responds, to walk again. <laughs> so my sister clarifies, how about something I can get you at Macy's? <laughs> I am grateful she has friends that are still alive. Her best friend Evelyn is 90 and still going strong. She works three days a week and discussed her upcoming trip to New Orleans to go gambling at 90. <laughs> my own desire to live a long time is tempered by my desire to, out, to not outlive my friends. The pseudoscience of iridology claims you can tell what's wrong with a person's health by looking at their irises, so if you see me staring intently at my friends, don't worry, I'm just determining if I should kill myself. <laughs> being in a hospital and even less happy with the knowledge in the back of her head that she might end up in an assisted living facility. But she keeps trying. Someone once asked me, if you're an atheist and believe there's nothing after this life, then why bother living? I responded, because chocolate cake tastes good. <laughs> Gluten free, of course. <laughs> Thank you.